North. Finally leaving the book room with the uh, chapter 2 evidence. All the warmth and splendor of the cozy study vanishes as you find yourself in a sprawling library choked with stacks of old tomes and a thick layer of dust. Time has been less kind to this ancient repository. The air in this dilapidated library vibrates with a foreboding energy. Silent words whisper forth from the passages, calling to you. Piles of old books are stacked across a large desk on the north wall. Dusky bookshelves buckling under the weight of the vast knowledge rest against the west wall and the east wall. Or you can return to the study. Let's see, let's take it to the north wall, the, the uh, old books on the desk. The heavy, the heavy desk is adorned with carvings of demonic entities and runic symbols. Piles of thick tomes are littered across the, its aging surface, which also bears several deep claw marks tracing a path off the edge of one side. Oh, great. Uh, let's check the desk. On the far side of the desk, you find a large drawer. Drawer. The lock's keyhole is situated inside the mouth of a fanged human skull carving, because of course it is. Let's look at the tomes. It's a miracle these texts have stood the, the test of time. Their brittle pages seem to be held together by some unknown force. Select a book to read. Oh, this is going to be going on for a while, isn't it? <laughs> The Prayers of the Cosmic Serpent Divine. The book is titled The Prayers to the Cosmic Serpent Divine. The words are scratched on the page, penned in dark crimson ink. Read the book. Entwined in your veins, dark father, I am, riddled uns I am a riddle unsolved, a crucible of burnt offerings. Let my smoke rise to the heavens and seep into the deep valleys below. Breathe me in eternally. Let my blood be your blood. My tongue be your tongue, as I speak thy name and summon forth the locusts to strip away my flesh. Uh-oh. Is that going to literally happen to me? <laughs> for, f for light is the darkness, and the aged ones await, rotting, to consume the world anew, feasting on themselves in anticipation of the glut to come. Emerge once again from the chrysalis, stretch muscle, bone, and talon. Sharpen your teeth on the fair city below. For your faithful await the third coming of your ceaseless presence. He closed the book. I thought that we were about to get sacrificed. Like, we we're gonna, I thought we were about to sacrifice ourselves by saying that stuff out loud. Tools of magic. In the pursuits of ancient magic, one cannot properly control the powerful forces at work beyond the veil without the correct instruments. Such is the need for appropriate tools to harness the, con the conduct a harness and conduct the elements during the rituals of magic. Bell. A summoner's tool. The bell is rung to break the silence between the physical plane and the material realm, opening the door for entities to step through. This immediately feels like Bloodborne territory, which of course is inspired heavily by Lovecraftian story. Athame, or Atame? This one's beyond my vocabulary. This ritual knife is used to direct energies to your bidding, though it also doubles as a tool for bloodletting when the need arises. Candles. The candle is a beacon of light in a sea of darkness. It signifies hope, fire, intent, and the dualities of the <clears throat> sorry, of the universe. It can attract and repel a variety of otherworldly forces. Salt. A great purifier. Salt has powerful cleansing and product and protective properties. Most often, it's used to, in concentration and, and drawing magical circles or symbols. Rope. Used in binding rituals, the rope is alter, uh, alternately a useful tool for holding forces at bay or unlocking the doors of your deep, uh, deeper conscious. I wonder if these tools are actually going to be something I have to look at to try to use. It's a miracle these texts have stood the test of time. Yeah, back to the books. I might have to look at the tools of magic for some puzzle or something at some point. Mechanics of the Invisible World. The book is titled Mechanics of the Invisible World. The Unseed World is home to many secrets, some caused by forces of wayward energy and some made by man. It's the combination of the two that can yield the most interesting results. Imbuing simple mechanical devices with arcane energy allows you to control their effect and manipulate them through invisible triggers like a word, a sound, a command, or even interaction between remote chemical objects linked by remote mechanical objects linked by pure energy 
Using magic to manipulate such artifacts is no easy task. Tremendous will and discipline are required to channel arcane forces into a physical object in such a way that it will retain its spiritual charge. The ritual can take days to perform correctly, but once complete, it will produce a powerful artifact that can be shaped to the user's will, providing protection, concealment, or practical innovation. Alright, we're done with these books then. We looked at the back tomes and desks. Let's see. We have a west wall. A parade of tomes. It's just an endless number of books everywhere, forever. Oh god, there's four this time. Okay, inked bound catalog. These antique books hail from a time long past. Demonic entities from beyond. A primer. This is interesting because it could all still be. This could all be information about the world we're in that could be important for the logic if we're trying to solve situations. Or I could be wasting everyone's time, but I enjoy reading these things. The Great One, the Divine Serpent, is known by many names in different forms, yet all visages and incarnations are but facets of a gleaming crystal. The many faces of the one true form, and it is wise for any who seek to be touched by the cosmic might to know intimately of its shapes and aspects. A-B-R-A-X-T-H Huh. They're spaced weirdly, too. Interesting. Known by other names, the Gatekeeper, the Traveler, Dweller of the Void. It is said that the planar spheres collide. The thirteenth gate will open between worlds. This is the kingdom of, Expre of Abrax, a swirling void of temporal echoes. Should this aspect choose to emerge, it will require a willing penance of vitality from the summoner, though it may fully consume the unwary. This one's weird. Zarasul, I believe. Known by other names, the Seducer, Keeper of Secrets, the Forgotten Fire. Beyond the Sixth Gate lies the domain of Zarasul, a burning plain awash in a sea of souls churning endlessly in turbulent motion. This aspect will appear in a form it believes will speak to your inner heart. Beware its captivating pull, lest you be consumed by its fire. Ort. Ortthal, looks like. Known by other names. The Corrupter. Obinate Son. The Obinate Son? I don't know. Obinate? Abominate. Probably. <laughs> Collector of the Elements. When your heart is weaker than your mind, you become susceptible. It is here, through the Eleventh Gate, you will find the cursed domain of Orthalm. Eager to bestow the wishes of the, uh, of the one who summoned it, this aspect may seek something in return. Bathra. Known by their names, the Destroyer, Eater of Souls, a Great Ender. When the howls of suffering reach a crescendo, the third gate will appear and Bathras will make itself known. Bathra or Bathras? Is that supposed to be an S, maybe? Or is it different names? Cruelty and suffering are the poetry of this malevolent aspect, though it may err on the side of benevolence should it be appeased. I wonder if some of these... Like, what if, what if one of these demon names or whatever refers to the weird bird creature we saw, and what if some of these may even give us hints about how to solve future encounters, or maybe none of that? Uh, Kelal. Known by other names, the Transmuter, Shapeshifter Adept, the Puzzle Keeper. The realm of Kalal lies between the second and eighth gates, which merge into a single doorway opening the path to its obfuscated domain. Do not be surprised by deceit from this aspect, which is known for dooming summoners incapable of solving its arcane conundrums. You close the book. There's a lot going on here. Let's take a look around before I read too much more, because it's been a while now. Let's try... Let's see here, large desk in the north. Against the east and west wall. Let's go to the east wall. This should be a row upon a row of books are lined up on the wall here. I know there's wall, but what about this passage over here? Maybe you need to find a specific book to even get through that door. Select a book to read. Uh, so many words from a, long, from a time long ago, knowledge and arcane power collides across the pages of these dark texts. The Laws of the Sect. The book is titled The Laws of the Sect. All of the pages are in the some have been 
defaced, rendering it unreadable. Instead, the words, there is no law, is written thousands of times across the original text, covering every inch of every page. Creepy. The book is titled, Portals of Dimensional Evil. Oh, cool. Let's just get some of that around here. It'll end great for me. Opening dimensional rifts between disparate realms can be rife with consequence, disrupting the balance between juxtaposing realities in too great a manner is perilous to both the conjurer and the greater con uh, cont uh, continuum beyond. Small dimensional rifts channeled through the ley lines within a given plane are useful for, the, for traveling great distances in a short order. These minor portals are less dangerous to craft and maintain, and their practical application is of tremendous use. It's when the divine... It's when the divide between alternate planes of existence is breached, however, that events of the most... the utmost catastrophic nature can unfold. Should an entity attempt to transgress the planar order and occupy the same sphere of influence as its opposite self, the resulting paradox can result in untold damage to the fabric of time and space. The Book of Fraud and Fakery. Oh, fun. This might, this might be my favorite, then. <laughs> Clever, it appears that this book is entirely blank inside. You flip through the pages anyway. Halfway through the book, you find a secret compartment hollowed out in the pages. Inside the secret hideaway, you find a small key carved into a human finger bone. There we go. So we have the key now that we can use on the creepy skull mask. So that's the one thing we needed to find. I can't help it, though. I can't help but try to read the, what, what I haven't done yet. Let's see. Psionics and the defense from psychic attack. Ooh. A simple serenity of mind is a prime requ uh, requis re uh, re uh, requisite for building a foundation of, of proper defense against psychic attack from man, demon, and beast alike. Practice in clearing the thought, uh, in clearing all thought and stilling the consciousness is necessary to begin layering your protective mental state. With this skill achieved, the next step is to erect a mental barrier to strengthen one's psychic armor. Hone it to all impenetrable field, oh, hone it to an, an impenetrable field that flows as an outer layer through the body. Take care to confine yourself in periods of rest and social confinement during the initial imp improvement of, the, of this process, else it's possible to weaken the psyche through exhaustion and become susceptible to attack. A, summoner's initi a summoner initiates grimoire. I feel like I've been looking for this book for the last several hours of playing uh, Dragon's Dogma, actually. Walking the path of the Summoner Initiate is a dangerous prospect to those not of the utmost soundness of mi in mind, body, and spirit. Demonic entities slithering beyond the veil are eager tricksters, waiting for every opportunity to possess the living. Those that walk in the darkness, the rest of the pages are torn and singed, curious. Finish the book. Not much going on there, it got ripped apart. So, it sounds like someone had their uh, initial summon as an, a summoner initiate, and the summon destroyed their book, and probably them. The Codex of Symbols. Light? Huh. Light looks like plankton, basically, or a green lantern. Dark? Okay, sufficiently sinister. Labyrinth? That one's easy. Truth? Is... a bow tie? Bow ties are cool. Twin? It's, yeah, that's straightforward enough. Alright, so we're good. We're ready to use the book. North wall. I mean, use the, the uh, key. Use the bone key. You place the bone key into the lock and turn it until you hear it click. The skull carving springs to life and bites down on the fragile bone key, snapping it off in the lock permanently. The desk drawer is unlocked. Examine its contents. Inside you find a small silver bell and a bag of salt. There's a strange marking inside one of the drawers. Carved into the wood of the desk drawer, you find an ancient symbol that exudes an electric t uh, current that raises the hair on your arm as, you, as your hand draws near. As your fingers touch the ancient no notches in the wood, a faint tingle races through your veins. You hear a strange click from the western wall of the library, then the feeling passes. Sorry. Got a weird hiccup for a second there. The heavy desk is adorned with carvings of demonic entities and runic symbols. 
piles of thick tomes are littered across its aging surface, which also bears several deep claw marks. Oh, we're back in the, the room in general. Let's see. So the east wall seems to have a, it might have a doorway. No. Nope. Here you find a slight breeze on your face on the, on the east wall. Select a book to read. Is one of them a way out though? Book of Fraud and Fakery. Entirely blank inside. Laws of the Sect. Read this book, the portals. Let's see here. So how do we go about leaving? The tomes across the surface, we've read all these, right? Yeah. Desk. I'm an idiot, sorry. I guess, I just, I guess I've been reading for a while because I just lost track of what was going on there for a second. The desk drawer is unlocked. Examine its contents. The desk is empty, save for the strange marking inside the drawer. You touch the, empty, the ancient symbol again, but nothing happens. So there's something going on with this draw, Huh. No, I didn't lose track of something, it was just nothing happened. So there's something I need to use there. Let's see. I have a silver bell, a bone key, and a bag of salt. Return to the study. Huh. I may be losing focus a little bit. <laughs> I'm a little worried now. So we can't leave, right? We're just in a room with books. Okay. And those words coming from the pages to call to us. Oh, one of the books has been pushed forward out of place. Push it back in. You push the book back and hear a rumbling sound coming from the study to the south. An endless parade of tomes with grim, peculiar titles can be found along the massive bookshelf on this wall. Inked, bound, and cataloged, these antique books hail from a time long past. So these are the same books already, but now we've had a sound to the south. A warm glow emanates from the crackling fire. You're tempted to recline in one of the fine leather chairs positioned near a stack of books in the well-stocked study. That's a new thing, right? A small panel has opened in the wall above the fireplace, revealing a button. You press the button and hear a low rumble from the ancient library to the north. Let's see, there should be an opening on the east wall, judging by the map. The bookcase is shifted aside to reveal a secret passage leading downwards. Oh, that's to look at the bookcase again. Uh, the smell of decay wafts from below as you descend the staircase. A crisscrossing network of long scratch marks are clawed along the ascending passage. You hear something creeping up the stairs towards you. Hello. We have a blood meter, apparently, so this is combat, I guess. Hit points 12, you encounter a stone lord. I can, all I can do is attack. You critically damage the stone lord. The stone lord is injured and prepares to attack. You manage to dodge the stone lord's attack. The battle continues. Attack. It dodges my attack and it prepares to counterattack, but I dodge. Attack. I critically damage the stone lord. It's injured and prepares to attack, but I dodge. So it has 12 hit points, but they don't seem to be going down. The Stone Lord dodges your attack and you slip, leaving yourself prone. It prepares to attack, but you still manage to dodge. You must not be very good at attacking, unless one good attack is going to kill me. I can't click on anything here, right? You damage the Stone Lord. It's injured and prepares to strike. It damages me. Luckily, your inju my injuries are superficial and the battle continues. It has 11 hit points. Wow. We just took away one hit point from it now. Let's see, I slip and I'm prone. I dodge. I critically damage it, but it doesn't seem to be actually doing damage so far. But I dodge. 
I took it took another damage from me. We both dodged. It so I heard it again. I dodge. It dodged again. I dodged. I damage it. I dodge. It dodges my attack and I'm prone, but I dodge again. I damage it. It damages me. Oh, there's a chunk of my health gone. That's worrying. Luckily, your injuries are superficial. The battle continues. You critically damage it. And I dodge. I damage it. And I dodge. I'm, I slip, but I dodge. You damage the Stone Lord. You have slain the Stone Lord. Victory. You survive the encounter. You absorb the blood of your fallen adversary and feel invigorated. That's concerning. I guess that means I'm healed, but also may not be entirely human or something, or something weird is going on with me, or this place, if it's even real. The stairs lead upwards to the west and downwards to the east, so continue east. I can go north or south. A faint, a faint whisper uh, echoes down from the stairs to the north. The trail of scratch marks continues around the corner and down the stairs to the south. Great. So there's cr scratch marks to the south and then a whisper to the north. And I am equally convinced that either of them could kill me. But let's go north towards the voice. Because since the, the scratch just seems like such a bad idea, but they both, seems like, they both seem like bad ideas. You hear whispers coming from the chamber down the stairs to the west. It sounds like it's saying, give. The moment your foot crosses the, th the threshold, the whispers stop. At the far end of the room, you notice a glass display case. The only exit in this room is the stairs leading upwards to the east. Display case? Looking through the protective glass and closing the top of the case, you see a book inside. It's bound in an unusual blood-red leather and inscribed with the image of a demon on its cover. In the base of the display, there appears to be a compartment. Compartment's locked. You're going to need a key to open it. Let's look at the glass. Do you want to break the glass? Oh, it's a bad idea. Let's do it. So slamming the glass hard, you fail to affect it in any visible way, though the pulsing pain in your fist is another story. Alright, that didn't amount to much then. So we gotta go to the south. Great. The atmosphere grows heavier as you round the corner and continue down the stairwell. With each step further, the staircase feels a little colder, and the hair on your back of your neck perks up. The stairs go down to the west and upwards to the north. West? It's immediately clear that this room has borne witness to many awful happenings. You can feel a dark, powerful, residual em energy lingering through the chamber. Deep gouges, dried bloodstains, and a single and a singe and singe marks on the stone walls and floor weave an unspoken chronicle of ancient ritual sacrifice and otherworldly encounters. The side walls of this grim ritual chamber are lined with narrow cabinets. There's a large altar along the south wall. Stairs the north, so I can look at the cabinets or the altar. Try the cabinets first, because it's less horrifying to my potential future. Once well stocked, these old cabinets are now mostly littered with old dusty herb and a vile assortment of bottled ingredients. Your meticulous searching doesn't come up completely empty handed, however. One drawer contains a stack of half burnt candles. Another holds a small pouch with a key. There we go, we have the key we probably need. Let's go, let's avoid the altar for now. Oopsie. North, 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 west, display case, compartment. Do you use the tiny key on the display? I mean, now I can't do anything else, can I? Because <laughs> it was the only option they gave me. You unlock the case. The, compar the compartment flips open to reveal a sharp ritual dagger resting next to the siphon si uh, stone siphon that drains deeper into the base of the display. The siphon bowl is carved into the shape of a gaping demonic maw. Etched into the cold steel of the ritual, Atame, are simply the words give. So it's asking for a blood sacrifice, right? Basically, this is the exact thing we read about in one of those documents, is the Atame. If I'm, if I'm saying any of that right, the Atame. Um, Jesus Christ, do I cut myself? Give. Slicing and gashing your hand with a knife, you let 
your blood uh, flow freely into the demonic siphon's mouth. Within seconds, the stone carving's eyes glow bright crimson, and the glass holding the book shudders, then melts away to nothingness. Demonic Invocation, the Book of Rituals. Knowledge required to successfully summon the various aspects of the Divine Spirit. Alright, Invocation of the First through Fifth Form. First Form. The Call of Abrax. Alright, so these are all of the demons we read about earlier. To call forth Abrax, perform the ritual sequence. First rite, set the candles in a circular arrangement. Second rite, using salt, draw the light symbol. Set third rite, ring the bell once. Fourth rite, give the offering of blood. Fifth rite, recite the passage below. I am the light, the dark, the, ne the nether in between. Reaching out to you, dweller of the hollow void, deliver your will upon me. So I'm basically going to want to research the five demons to figure out which one's the one I would want to summon, basically. Because some of these are less helpful than others, probably. Like the ingredients here. Salt. I have salt. Bell. I have a bell. I can do the blood offering. I have candles. I know I can I can learn the symbols. So <laughs> we're... <laughs> this video game's... This game's going to have me research how to do a freaking ritual correctly. <laughs> This is going to be interesting. This is an interesting day we're having today. Second form. Ortho, uh, Ortholm. Second form. To call forth Ortholm, perform the ritual sequence. Set the candles in star arrangement. Use the salt for the truth symbol. Uh, ring the bell five times. Give an offering of saliva. Recite the passage below. My body and mind are out of sync and ripe for your conduction. I beseech that your presence be known, great, con great collector. Third form, Bathras. Third form, uh, first rite, set the candles in a cross arrangement. Using salt, draw the dark symbol. Ring the bell 13 times. Give an offering of blood. Recite the passage below. My suffering is great, drinker of pain. Join me now, great one, so you may taste my agony. I don't like that one so much. Fourth form. Azerasul. Uh, set the candles in a star arrangement. Use salt and a twin symbol. Ring the bell nine times, offering of hair. That's not too bad. Our fires burn as one dark tempter of the under realm. Show your form so that I may marvel in its divine splendor. Fifth. Kelal. Candles in a cross arrangement. Labyrinth symbol. Th ring the bell three times, offering of spit. Recite the passage below. I am ready to solve your challenge and be absolved through your ancient knowledge. I am impart upon me your ever shifting wisdom. Huh. That might be the one to do as fifth form. I don't know if I have to do them all in order, is the question, though. Do I have to do them in all in order or just pick one? And the book just stays here. So I have to memorize this. I probably have to. I should probably start. I should probably write down notes once I pick which one I want. But for now, let's go ahead and go south, west, west, west. So one of these tomes will help me know what to do here. So demonic entity is a primer. I need. To, I need to make up my mind for sure here. Which one I want to. Re, which one I want to summon. Let's see. The Divine Servants known by many names. Abraxth. Gatekeeper, Traveler, Dweller of the Void. It is said when... I'm, I'm just going to have to reread re the whole thing to contextualize some of this. Let's see. It is said that the planar spheres collide... When they collide, the 13th gate will open between worlds. This is the kingdom of, of Abraxth. The swelling... A swirling void of temporal echoes. So it's Traveler, Gatekeeper... Should it emerge, it will require a willing penance of vitality from the summoner, though it may fully consume the, consume the unwary. So it's going to want blood, and it might just kill me. Cool. Uh, Zerasul. Seducer, keeper of secrets, forgotten fire. Let's see. Beyond the Sixth Gate, burning plain, watch souls of churning endlessly in turbulent motion. This aspect will appear in a form that believes it would... That it, uh... This aspect will appear in a form it believes will speak to your inner heart. Beware its captivating pull, lest you be consumed by its fire. Yeah, but what do I want? To, what am I trying to accomplish by these people? 
So first one wants blood, second one will try to tempt me. Uh, Orthal, the Corrupter, the Abominate, the Abo a Abominate Son, Collector of Elements. Eager to bestow the wishes of the one who summoned it, this aspect may seek something in return. So maybe I could ask this one to let me go, let me leave this place, but it may ask a sacrifice? Let's see. When your heart's weaker than your mind, you become susceptible. It is here through the 11th gate where you where you will find the cursed domain of Artholm. And then, uh, Bathral. Destroyer, eater of souls, the great ender. That seems like not what I want to have. <laughs> the howls of suffering reach a crescendo. Let's see. Cruelty and suffering are the poetry of this malevolent aspect, though it may err on the side of benevolence should it be appeased. Oh god, do I have to... So if I pleased it, it might help me. However you do that. Kalal. Known by other names. Transmuter, shapeshifter, adept, puzzle keeper. Don't be surprised by deceit from this aspect, which is known for dooming summoners incapable of solving its arcane conundrums. And merge... Let's see. Transmuter, shapeshifter. The eight gates, which merge into a single doorway, opening the path to its domain. Maybe I should just try to solve this guy's riddle. Kilal. Maybe that's the thing to do. Let's see, Kilal. Codex of Symbols, just a review. Okay, light looks like Plankton or a Green Lantern. Dark's pretty straightforward. Labyrinth. Truth is the bow tie. Twin. Okay. Let's see if I can figure this out. East. Passage. East. North. West. Display case. Book. Fifth form. Alright, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write some shit down. Some old school text stuff going on here, huh? There we go. I wrote down the passage too. I am ready to solve your challenge and be absolved through ancient knowledge. And part upon me your shifting wisdom. Alright. I've got the steps written down, because I get the feeling I might not be able to review them while I'm doing it. Ow, I stepped on the wrong thing. How did I manage to step on my my managed to step on my freaking headset? Alright. I am into this game right now. I don't know if any of this is entertaining at all, but this is really interesting to me. The more although the more interested I get into into any experience, the less people like that series usually. Alright. There's a large altar along the south wall. You push the altar. The necessary tools have been gathered. To begin the ritual? Place under the candles. Candles is the first step in the invocation ritual. How will you arrange them? In a cross. Shadows dance upon the walls of the ritual chamber. They make a swirling mass of malevolent shapes. They seem to be eyeing you with great interest. Drawing uh, of this ancient symbol is the next step in the invocation ritual. Which symbol do you draw? I need to draw the labyrinth symbol, so this one. You pour the salt on the symbol of the labyrinth. Intonation of the summoning bell marks the next phase of the invocation ritual. How many times do you ring the bell? Three times. The resonance of the bell stirs the darkness around you. The ritual now commands an offering of sacrifice to be made to entice a response from the dark ones. What will you sacrifice? Spit. You spit on the altar and it sizzles. You must now recite the final incantation to complete the ritual. Which passage sh uh, shall you recite? I am ready to solve your challenge and be absolved through your ancient knowledge. Impart upon me your ever-shifting wisdom. So I am ready to solve... Boop. You summon Kilal. Hey! What are you? I don't... Getting a little uncomfortable now. Alright, hello Kilal. A portal opens and spits forth Kalal, whose barbed probis <laughs> proboscis and larval frame twitches as it, as it addresses you. Summoner, you seek passage from here. I seek to harvest your intellect, a fair trade, perhaps, though I do not wish to be disappointed. Prepare your mind, Summoner. What is the fourth symbol entry in the Codex of Symbols? Motherfucker! Oh no, he's gonna quiz me about all of the library contents. Oh no. 
Okay, uh, it goes light, dark. Shit. Light, dark, labyrinth, I want to say? I think the fourth symbol would be la labyrinth or truth. I think it's truth. Shit. Truth? Ah, uh, your intellect is most satisfying, most fulfilling. You have served me well, summoner. And for that, I will let you pass. The entity disappears and the elder splits in half. Whoa, that was it? Bam, nailed it. A dark malevolent energy spews forth from the cracked altar. You're momentarily blinded by the brilliant flash of light. When you regain your sight, your sight you find yourself back in the gallery. Hey! See, audience? All that excessive reading, it paid off. Granted, I only had to read like one wall of things and ignore all the other things, but you know what? You know what? Shut up. I'm not, I, I, got, I didn't die, and I, learned, I got some cool stories of horrible endings. So, I'm counting that as a win.